From Hollywood, California, the Lux Radio Theater presents Grace Moore and Basil Rathman in Enter Madame. Lux presents Hollywood. This program, ladies and gentlemen, is the means our sponsors take of showing their appreciation of your loyalty to Lux Flakes. Every time you purchase a box of Lux Flakes, you're playing an active part in making this program possible. Tonight, you've brought to our microphone Grace Moore, Basil Rathbun, Sherwin Lynn, and William Frawley. Apart from the play, you'll hear Lyle Saxon, celebrated novelist and historian, and Jean Ellis, the 11-year-old singer, protege of Grace Moore. This evening, our producer, Cecil B. DeMille, is in New Orleans in connection with the world premiere of his new film, The Buccaneer. We'll hear from him, too, a little later, but during his brief absence from Hollywood, we're happy and proud to bring you as guest producer a man whom you all know and love, a man of many different abilities, but whom you know best for his remarkable performances in Diamond Jim Brady and Come and Get It, one of the greatest personalities in the motion picture industry. I introduce to you now, ladies and gentlemen, our guest producer for tonight, that splendid and amiable gentleman, Mr. Edward Arnold. Thank you, Mr. Ruick, and good evening, everyone. I'm very happy to be here tonight, ladies and gentlemen, and I'll try to make Mr. DeMille glad he asked me to pinch hit for him. My position at the moment reminds me of what happened once many, many years ago back in New York. A youngster, broken without a job, I was in the embarrassing position of having an appointment to see Maxine Elliott, but lacking a nice suit of clothes in which to present myself. There was nothing terribly amiss with my suit except for a patch in the trousers, which I installed myself. Anyway, I went, and by carefully maneuvering myself, succeeded in keeping the glaring patch out of the range of Miss Elliot's lovely eyes by the simple process of sitting down. Well, I got the part. In my excitement, I forgot all caution, and as I bounded from the chair to shake her hand, the miserable patch caught on a nail. There was a sound of ripping cloth, followed by at least three or four years of absolute silence. But Miss Elliot seemed completely unaware of the disaster. She said goodbye, and I presume I answered her. I really don't know. In the lobby of her theater, her manager overtook me. I knew what he was going to say. Miss Elliot had changed her mind. The job was gone. Instead, he placed a hundred-dollar bill in my hand. Miss Elliot begs you not to be offended, he told me. She wants you to take this money and get yourself a new suit of clothes. If this experience brought tears to my eyes, then, well, I can smile at it now. Now, the point of that story is that I wasn't entirely prepared for my interview with Miss Elliot, and tonight I can't help but feel a little unprepared for so major an undertaking as conducting the Lux Radio Theater. My only hope is that your kindness of heart will equal Miss Elliot's. An introduction for Miss Moore and Mr. Rathbun is like an overcoat in California, hardly necessary. Miss Moore's new film, I'll Take Romance, has just been released by Columbus Studios, and following our broadcast, she leaves for the Metropolitan Opera House in New York. She sings there next Saturday in La Boheme, and tonight is heard as Lisa de la Rubia. You'll hear Basil Rathbun in a new type of role. We break tradition and cast him, not as a villain, but as Gerald Fitzgerald, our hero and leading man. Basil comes to us from the set of The Adventures of Robin Hood, the forthcoming Warner Brothers film. Many of you, I'm sure, saw our play written by Gilda Varese and Dolly Byrne, either on the stage or, as produced by Paramount, on the screen. Our cast also includes William Frawley as Farnham and Sharon Lynn as Flora. And now the curtain goes up on the Lux Radio Theater presentation of Enter Madame, starring Grace Moore and Basil Rathbun. <laughs> The Covent Garden Opera House in London. It's the third act of Martha, and Lisa Della Robbia, the beautiful and world famous soprano, leads the chorus to a thrilling climax. In a box, just off the stage, is young Gerald Fitzgerald. He leans forward, his hands clenched, his eyes intent on the beautiful singer. 
His companion, a well-dressed young woman, is a bit jealous of his devoted attention. So nice of you to bring me, Gerald. Huh? Oh, yes. I wanted yes, you to Yes, you hear. see, it's so difficult for a woman to go about alone in Europe. Even a widow. Yes, Flora. Poor Flora. You're fond of opera, aren't you? Hmm. Especially as this Lisa Della Robbia sings it. Oh, what do you mean? You were here the last time she sang, weren't oh, you? The last five times. Oh. Why, were you ridiculous boy? What's the matter? Don't you like her? Oh, she's pretty, of course. If you care for that type. Personally, I've heard better voices. I haven't, and she's not pretty. She's beautiful. Just look at her. Oh, just look at that hair. Just look. 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 What's the matter with you? That lantern on the stage. It's setting part of her dress. Look out. Sake, sit down. She doesn't know that it's burning. Her dress is burning. Get out of my way. Sit down. You can't jump out of the box. I'm going to get out of that stage. Let him get a lobby on the couch. Now, Lisa, please, calm yourself. Think of your voice. With his hands, did you see for him with his two bare hands he beat off the flames off? Where is he? Lisa, as your manager and personal representative, I must insist that you remain calm. Where is he? Oh, he's over there lying on the floor. Dead? He gave his life for me. Oh, no, he's not dead. He tripped over a cable and hit his head on the scenery. He's a little unconscious. Well, 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 we must revive him at once. Oh, where is that maid? Maria, my smelling salt, please. Gerald? Gerald? Gerald, look, it's Flora. Gerald. Oh, where is he, my hero? There. Oh, poor boy, poor boy. And how handsome. Will you kindly stand out of the way, please? Give him some air. Air? Do you know who I am? He's unconscious. I've got to get him out of this place to his hotel. Oh, go away, please. I will take care of him myself. You let him alone. I'm going to take him out of here. Mm, you are his wife? No, I'm not. Then why should you take him? It was my life he saved, wasn't it? He goes to my villa where my doctors and my servants will take care of him. The smelling salt, Madame de la Robbia. Oh, Maria, thank you. And the stretcher bearer, Madame. I have bring the stretcher bearer. Oh, gentlemen, lift him carefully, carefully. Yes, Madame. And take him to my You're villa. not going to take him to any such place. Why do you keep interfering? He is coming around. He is coming too. Oh. oh, is Madame de la Robbia all right? There, you see. His first thought is of me, and he shall decide. Listen, my wonderful hero. Oh, madame. Will you come to my villa where we can nurse you back to strength? What? Will you? Will I? Oh, is this really happening to me? Or is it just the effect of a crack on the head? Oh, poor head. Poor, poor head. <laughs> Please. Good morning. I want to see Madame de la Robbia. Oh, I am sorry, Don't but... tell me she's not here. This is her villa, isn't it? Well, I'm a brother and I want to a see brother? her. So I'm here. Quick, brother. get out of my way. Do you hear me? All Stand right. A... She's in the breakfast room. Thank over you. there. Lisa. Johnny. Johnny, dear, why didn't you tell me you were coming? Well, I should think you'd know why. Who's that man over there? Oh, that's Mr. Fitzgerald. Gerald, this is Johnny, my little American brother. How do you do? Half-brother. Yes, I know. I've heard about you, Johnny. And I heard about you the minute I got off the boat. Why, it's a public scandal. Lisa. You took him here to your villa? Yes, Johnny, dear. He's been here since Wednesday. Yes, Johnny, dear. Is that all you had to say? <laughs> yes, Johnny, dear. Don't Johnny, dear me. As for you, Fitzgerald, well, you're an American. You ought to know better. Let Lisa withdraw and we'll settle this man to man. Uh, how old are you, Johnny? That's got nothing to do with he it. He is 19 and he's an impertinent, meddlesome boy. I'm not. You are. Well, good morning, Lisa. Oh, Farnham. How nice of you to call. Uh, who's this? Not Johnny. Well, how are you, Johnny, dear? <laughs> Uh, how do you do? Uh, Mr. Farnham, I'm glad you're here. As her personal manager, you've got to save my sister. Half-sister. You keep out of this. But I can't, even if I wanted to. I can't. You see, Johnny, dear, your little half-sister and I were, were married. Married? Married? Three days ago. Is this true? <laughs> On a bright, Johnny. Married. Oh, if you're going to fall down, try the armchair. It's softer. Married. <laughs> well, Mr. Fitzgerald, 
I suppose you're old enough to know what you're doing. What do you mean? Well, have you any idea what it's like being married to an opera singer? I think I'm the luckiest man in the world. Mm, You'll find out. Barnum, what a horrible thing to say. Oh, I'm not talking against you, Lisa. Just your job. Well, I'd better cancel your bookings for a month anyhow. We want this marriage to last through the honeymoon. You'll do nothing of the kind. It'll be a swell honeymoon. Going from city to city with Lisa while she sings. All right, all right. Tag along, and when you've heard all the operas about six times, you'll begin to ask for vanilla. That's a nice thing to say. <laughs> oh, Toto, dear little Toto, come here, Toto. There, you see, Farnham, Toto is angry with you for the things you say. Dear little Toto, little ball of fur and teeth. <laughs> Pernicious little pooch. I suppose you've met Toto, Mr. Fitzgerald. Yes? Why? Oh, nothing, only I expect you'll be seeing a lot of him from now on. Farnham. Sorry if I've been a gloom. Next time, I'll flutter in scattering rosebuds. Are you sure there's nothing I can do? Yes, you can take Johnny away. Oh, yes, Johnny. Mary. Come along, Johnny, and leave the lovebirds to twitter over little Toto. Have a cigarette, Mr. Fitzgerald? American. Thanks. Well, so long. Come on, Johnny. Mary. Ah. What is it, Lisa, dear? That Farnham. He has spoiled everything. He has not. If you think it is true what he said, I'll give you a divorce today. I think he's crazy. And I think you're beautiful. And I wouldn't change places with anybody in the world. If my career should interfere with our love... It couldn't. Oh, I'd give it up. I'd never let you. Whatever you like, that's what I'll like always. Oh, Gerald, think of how it will be. You and I together in Milan and Naples. And then when the tour is over, the canals of Venice, soft music. And perhaps a gondolier singing in the distance. Oh, Gerald. I can't believe it yet, Lisa. It's even more beautiful than you promised. Venice, the moonlight, drifting in a gondola. The gondolier is singing. Yes, his voice is a little uh, tired, isn't it? Oh, Lisa, dear, do you always think of your work? Oh, no, darling, no more. The tour is over at last. Yes, thank heaven. You were bored. No, darling, I was not. But now I can have you all to myself. All by ourselves. Darling, darling, what was that Farnham was saying this evening about the um, a concert tour? Oh, I don't know. Uh, Lisa, you, you won't let him persuade you to put off our trip, will you? Oh, darling, didn't I promise? You certainly did. We sailed to Boston to your home. And for a year, well, anyhow, for six months, I'll just be your wife. The most adorable wife in creation. Oh, Lisa. Listen. What? Oh, he must not sing that one flat. Say the no. Lisa, that was beautiful. I sang it for you, my darling. My beloved. 
Here, 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 here. Get down, get down. Get off me, get off me. Stop it, Toto. Oh, let go, let go. Toto, come here. Oh, he thought you were going to kiss me, and he's so jealous. Poor Toto. Poor Toto, look at my hand. Oh, Toto, how many times have I told you not to bite Gerald? Oh, Lisa, do we have to take Toto with us every place? Mm, Gerald. Well, I don't think a gondola is quite the place for a dog, even a good dog. Oh, I didn't know you felt like that. It seemed you're not pleased with me No, tonight. no, darling, it isn't that I... And I thought everything would be so lovely, so beautiful. No, it is. It is. Oh, Lisa, I'm sorry, darling. Really, I am. Oh, please, don't cry. Well, tell Toto you are sorry, too. All right, darling. I'm sorry, Toto. <laughs> Oh, Gerald, you are so sweet when you want to be. But you must be patient with us, darling. You must. Because uh, I love you, darling. Oh, I love you too, Lisa. Oh, Gerald. Oh, Lisa. <laughs> oh, get down, get down. Stop it, stop it. Toto, stop, stop. I will not. But Lisa... I say no, Farnham. I will not go on a tour. I have promised to go with Gerald to America. Our boat sails tomorrow. Lisa, please, listen. Mr. Bjornsson and Mr. Carlson have come all the way from Copenhagen to see you. No, it is no good. Let them go back. Well, they had Cadmina under contract. Cadmina? Yes, but she lost her voice. Hmm. She never had one. Well, they had her booked for a big Scandinavian tour. Best cities, <laughs> highest <laughs> prices. Cadmina, <laughs> Cadmina. Yes, and if you don't grab this offer now, she'll recover her voice and she'll take it. Lisa, I know you want to go to America, but here's a chance you may never have again. Cities that never heard you. The whole Scandinavian peninsula in the hollow of your hand. The whole peninsula? Cadmina is their favorite. Now you can be. The whole peninsula? Yeah. I wonder what Gerald would say. All the shore that's going to shore, all the shore that's going to Gerald, please don't look so sad. I'm not sad, darling. I mean, I, I am sad, but, oh, oh I, I don't know what I mean. Oh, it's so dreadful to say goodbye, even for a little while. Please change your mind, darling. Don't go to Boston. Come to Copenhagen with me. Just Copenhagen. No, dear, I, I, I've got to think of my business, really. I've neglected it long enough, and I'm, well, I'm a little tired of hotel rooms anyway. You are angry. I will go to Boston with you. I'll sacrifice no, everything. No, 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 dear. I'm not, I'm not angry, Lisa. I'm disappointed. All but... ashore, please. We're sailing in a moment, madame. Well, hold the boat. Uh, Lisa, you'd better go. Oh, I will not step ashore until you say it is all right. Yes, it's all right, dear. I tell you, it's, it's all right. Just one concert at Copenhagen, and then you can join me in Boston. Madame, please. You are sure, Gerald? Yes, darling, yes. Now, please, you're holding up the ship. This way, madame. Gerald, you mean it. You are sure. Yes, yes. All right, I go then. Only Copenhagen, and then I follow you. Goodbye, my sweet wife. Goodbye, dearest. Goodbye, my Goodbye. darling. Goodbye. Goodbye. Hello. Hello, Gerald. Why, Flora. How are you, dear? I see we're shipmates. Oh, I thought you were still in London, Flora. Surprise. Where's your wife? Uh, oh, she's she's down there on the dock. She's not sailing with you. No, no, she has to sing in Copenhagen. How nice for her. But how sad for you, sailing all alone. Oh, we won't be separated long. I hope. <laughs> Able to Gerald Fitzgerald aboard the steamship Cote de Calabria. Darling, do you so much mind if I sing also in Oslo? I have said yes already, but my heart is troubled. Love, Lisa. Lisa Della Robbia, Oslo, Norway. Must you do it? All my love, Gerald. Gerald Fitzgerald, Boston, Massachusetts. Farnham is a beast. He has promised Stockholm also. I am heartbroken. So is Toto. Love, Lisa. Lisa Della Robbia, Stockholm, Sweden. Sorry about Toto. How long does this go on? Regards, Gerald. Gerald Fitzgerald, Boston, Massachusetts. My darling, we have to go north again to Trondheim. Please tell me it is all right. Love, Lisa. Lisa Della Robbia, Trondheim, Norway. It is all right. When you get to Greenland, send me an icicle. <laughs> Like the angel. Why, with my costume, Marie, they did like me, didn't they, Farnham? Keep it up, Lisa. Only keep it up for the last act and they'll elect your queen. You should hear them out there. Oh, here's a telegram. Oh, from Gerald. Give it to me. Not during a performance. Now, how many times must I tell you? Oh. What is it? Oh, it's impossible. Bad news? 
He wants to leave me. Who, Gerald? Never you. He wants to leave you? Yes, and it's your fault. Me? Yes, you. Who kept me here for that concert tour? You. Who made me stay for another opera season? You. Who separated me from my husband and kept me separated? You. Lisa, I... Oh, n- why did I listen to you? Now he's tired of waiting. He's forgotten me. Perhaps he has someone else. Well, I'm going to... Him. Now? Where's my rap? Call a taxi. Yes, madam. You can't go now. You still have the third act to sing. You sing it. But you can't walk out on a show. It just isn't done. What does it matter whether those people out there hear a little more music? I have life to consider. Life. Lisa, Lisa, what am I going to do with it? Lisa, you've come back. Did you think I would leave without Toto? Come, darling. <laughs> <laughs> In a few moments, we will go on with Act Two of Enter, Madame, starring Grace Moore and Basil Rathbone. Here in Hollywood, there's always a group of young hopefuls struggling for a chance to convince a director that they're good enough for a part in pictures. Perhaps you've often wondered how it would seem to be a movie director. Well, why not sit back in your chair and for the next few moments consider yourself a full-fledged director? Decide for yourself which of the two young actresses you are about to hear in our Intermission Lux playlet is more entitled to a part in pictures. In our playlet... Two movie extras are dressing for a scene on a desert island following a shipwreck. Their names are Nancy and Joan. Well, you don't look much like you've just come through a shipwreck with that grin on your face, Nancy. (laughs) What's got into you this morning? Well, you see, Joan, it's this way. I got an uncle back home who wishes he had a daughter of his own, just like me. And this morning, he sent me a nice, fat birthday check. Honor? Well, what are you going to do with it? I'm going to blow the whole check on new undies soon as we get off this set this afternoon. You know, nothing does more for my morale than a good buying spree in a lingerie shop. But, Nancy, well, you've bought more lovely underthings since you've been out here than any girl I know. Yeah, I know, but, oh, they've gotten so dingy and slazy, it it gets me down just to look at them. You should talk. I noticed that slip you have on is brand new. New? Why, this slip's been Lux dozens of times. If you didn't have a rich uncle, you'd soon learn to Lux your nice things, too. Yes, when it comes to washing under things, smart girls stick to Lux Flakes. These gentle flakes keep silk things dainty and new-looking longer. When you rub delicate fabrics with a cake of soap or use harsh soaps, you're apt to wear them out very quickly. Colors may fade, too. That's why it's wise to stick to Lux, not only for under things, but for stockings. You can be sure that anything safe in water is safe in Lux Flakes. And now, Mr. Arnold. We continue with Enter Madame, starring Grace Moore and Basil Rathbun. <laughs> Gerald Fitzgerald, tired of being married to a wife who is never at home, has definitely decided that divorce is the only solution. In his apartment in Boston, he sits by the fireplace, gazing disconsolately into the flames. Flora Preston who in her own subtle way is responsible for his decision, is seated beside him. She takes his hand and speaks comfortingly. Gerald, don't be sad, darling. I'll make you happy. I know you will, Flora. You know, we're ideally mated, we two. We want the same things. Permanence, stability, and and comfort. Yes, yes, and peace of mind. Never had it with her, did you? To Lisa, our marriage was a game she played when she had nothing else to do. To me, it wasn't a game... It was solitaire. You poor darling. Oh, Gerald. Well, Johnny, what on earth are you... They told me she was here. Who? This woman. Who is she? Look here, you insufferable young puppy. Always kissing people, aren't you? And you're always popping up and you're not expected. Not I'm even here to wanted. my sister. Oh, shut up. Gerald, explain to him immediately. Yes, explain. Explain if you can. Very well. This Johnny, my boy, is Mrs. Preston, my future wife. Oh, I thought my sister was your wife. I'm divorcing your sister. What? Divorce? Yes, divorce. Why does everything I say surprise you so much? Divorce. Where is Lisa now? Well, the last time I heard from her, she was headed for Troidheim and points north. She isn't here yet? What are you talking about? Well, Lisa sent me a wireless this morning. She docks today. What? Here, read it. Well, that's why I came. I expected to find her here. Instead, I find her. Oh, keep quiet. This wireless, wireless certainly sounds like she's coming. Oh, I'll have to pack up and move over to the club. I beg your pardon, Mr. Fitzgerald. What is it, Jones? There are several people here. They say they're expected. Sir. Expect... Oh, Maria! Ma- Maria, what on earth you... Quiet, quiet, doctor. Sit down, Put the bag over there. And the trunk sent up. 
Archimede, go at once and prepare the lunch for madame. Mama uh, Maria, where, where is she? Where is Madame Delorobia? Right away she come. We have a little trouble at the custom. Oh, Who yes. are these people, Gerald? Uh, oh, this, uh, this is Maria. She's, uh... Jesus made. Uh, how do you do? I am so glad you are here to greet her. Madame, she adores uh, yes, uh, company. Uh, this is uh, Dr. Giovanni, her personal physician. Madame, I am delighted. And Archimede. Her personal chef. Such things I cook for her. Madame, you mm. mustn't stay for lunch. Oh, uh, so so lunch. So lunch. Oh, oh, so lunch. Oh, oh, so Madame, she loves you. Oh, listen. Oh, listen. Oh, listen, Maria. Oh, Doctor, Archimede, listen. Gerald. Gerald, has it always been like this? Oh, always, all over Europe. I can't stand it, dear. I have to go. I'm I'll so... call you later. Johnny, will you take Mrs. Preston to her car? All right. But remember, I'll be back. Yes, I know you Goodbye, will. Goodbye, darling. Doctor, doctor, listen. Maria, for heaven's sake, shut up. Shut up, all of you. Shut up. Oh, fun. Farnham, you're a lifesaver. How are you, Gerald? I was all right a few minutes ago. Where's Lisa? On her way up. Now? Now. Oh, have a cigarette, Farnham. Uh, American. Oh, thank you. Good afternoon. Enter, madame. Quiet, quiet, will you? Quiet. Be still, Toto. Quiet, quiet. Well, Gerald, it is good to see you. How are you, Lisa? Aren't you going to shake hands? Well, uh, Toto may not like it. <laughs> well, there is time. First, I must have my bath and my lunch and a little rest. And then we talk things over, Gerald, eh? Uh, uh yeah, uh, oh, well, yes, I suppose so, yes. <laughs> well, that finishes it, Lisa. All packed, Gerald? All packed and ready to go. You'll be comfortable here. Madame! Yes, Maria? Some flour come for you. Those? Looks like a funeral wreath. Yeah, I think so myself. <laughs> a wreath of white roses and a white dove in the center. Hmm, I do not like it. Then I throw it out from the window. Wait, there is a card. Aha. Flora Preston. Flora, oh, oh, yes, mm -hmm. yes, I, I wrote to you about her, Flora Preston. I see. She sent a peace offering, the little dead dove. <laughs> she is subtle, this lady. Oh, Lisa, you will twist things your own way. She just wishes to be kind, to welcome you. With a dead dog? Oh, she probably left it to the forest. <laughs> well, never doubt. I, I mean, you know, never mind it, that's all. All right, Maria. I'll see you yes, later. madame. Well, I'd better go. <laughs> oh, no, not yet. Aren't you glad to see me? I've always been glad to see you, Lisa. The trouble is that I haven't seen enough of you to keep me from starving. And from now on, you wish to die of starving? Oh, no, no, my dear. Just to try some other kind of nourishment. With the lady of the dead dove? You want a divorce? Yes. All right. We shall talk it over as friends. Yes, I am your friend, Lisa. To me, to me, you are still the most fascinating woman in the world. Oh, thank you. That makes it much easier for me to tell you my little story. The real reason for my coming. What? Your cable arrived at a most opportune moment. Ah, I also have met someone. Hmm? Oh, he is <clears> marvelous. <throat> Not yet 20, but a great poet. A poet? <laughs> <laughs> a poet. Oh, Lisa, a poet. <laughs> what are you laughing at? Oh, I don't believe a word of it. Oh, you do not believe it, eh? Then you are the only one who has yearnings. You leave me all alone. I so leave you... you alone. I am Lisa Della Robbia. I starve for romance for poetry. Very well, I find them, I take them. Oh, don't be a fool, Lisa. I, Lisa Della Robbia, am to be thrown aside like an old shoe, to leave alone, to die alone. Oh, stop it, Lisa, stop acting. You've been the baby wonder of the opera for a long time. Now, you listen to me. You've been spoiled and petted. You've done what you please. But it's time you grew up. You're old enough. Am I so old, Gerald? Too old for you to Lisa, love? Lisa, Lisa, I do love you, and I'm grateful to you. But you haven't the faintest idea of what it means to be a wife. What? I didn't mind you being an opera star. I didn't mind you being the great Madame de la Robbia. But when you ask me to be Mr. de la Robbia, that's going too far. Oh, I'll never forgive you for saying that the longest day I live. Very well, then, divorce. Divorce. You shall have it. Oh, I wish I had it here now to throw it into your sneering face. Thank you. Goodbye. 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 And don't you ever show your face in my house again. Oh, go to your Mrs. Preston. Go to your little dead dove. Go to her and take her flowers with you. Lisa. Go away. How are you this fine morning? I said go away, Farnham. Now, Lisa, let me talk to you for a minute, will you? Oh. You know, Lisa, what you need is to get your mind off this thing. You've been acting like a sick puppy for three months. What you need is new surroundings, hard work. Now, I've got a South American tour up my sleeve. No. And, and before we say it, I think I could arrange one guest performance at the Metropolitan. How'd you like no, that? No, no, I will never sing again. What? Never. 
Well, of course, if you're going to let this thing lick you. Who said I would? Ready to quit just because another dame takes she your husband. She hasn't taken him yet, and she won't either. The divorce is not final yet. I still have two weeks, and I've only begun to fight. Okay, okay, but I still think you're crazy not to grab this match job. Oh, no, no, no. I will never sing again. Wait. Hmm? If he heard me again, if he could hear me sing... That's it. He'd fall right into your arms. We will take the offer. But make it soon before the decree is final. Right. Ah, I will sing Tosca for him and his little dead doll. Great. And afterwards, I will have a supper for them. That's swell. <laughs> now let him see the two of you together. That's the ticket. I'll phone the bet right now. Oh, Farnham, the scheming and fighting for love. What have I done to deserve this? You got married. She couldn't have put us much closer to the stage, could she? Shh, Tona. I wonder why she invited us at all. And then this supper, what's that for? Oh, just a sort of farewell, I guess. How terribly nice. And she and I have to talk over the settlement, business matters, you know. Yes, I know. Listen, listen, here's our big audio. It was so nice of you to come. It's charming of you to ask me. Oh, but naturally, I ask you. You belong to the family now. I don't know just yet what our relation is to be, but uh, something, surely. My English is so shaky. But uh, wives-in-law, is it not? I'm sure I couldn't say. <laughs> Isn't that it, Gerald? Well, I, I really couldn't say. Well, what do you say, Farnham? Would you mind passing the gravy, please? Archimedes. At the once, madame, at the once. And some more talk for Monsieur Gerald, no, too. No, thanks. No more, no more. I couldn't. That was food for the gods, Lisa. Nothing like it on earth. Oh, Dr. Giovanni, some more wine. Oh, yes. Thank you. Well, uh, Signor Gerald, this is the last of the jolly little supper, eh? Yes, I'm afraid so. Your health, Doctor. Oh, my health. We have drink to have together in every corner of the globe. You and me, Gerald. 
Yes, it was fun while it lasted. Oh, Alicia, I forgot to tell you. Yes, Farnham? The impresario of the opera in Buenos Aires was out front tonight. He's crazy about you, willing to pay twice your salary if you'll open the season there. But of course I go. Tell him I go. Well, the only trouble is you'd have to sail tomorrow. <laughs> then we sail tomorrow. Please, sir, you mean it? Of course I mean it. Why not? Is there something to hold me here? Uh, well, no. Gerald, uh... Gerald, I really must be going there. It's very late. Oh, all right. I I suppose your car's waiting, Flora? Yes, but, but you'll ride home with me, won't uh, you? Well, I, I still have business to discuss with, with Lisa. Uh, yes, uh, I understand. Uh, Farnham, will you take Flora home? Sure, sure. Glad to. But I've got really, I don't have Oh, to. good night, Mrs. Preston. Good night. Don't let Gerald stay too late. Oh, I won't. <laughs> uh, good night. Good night, Gerald, dear. Good night, Flora. Good night, Mrs. Preston. May I see it your car? Huh? Oh, oh. Charming girl, Mrs. Preston. Charming. Lisa, I, uh, <clears throat> I, I hope I'm not keeping you up. Oh, dear me, no. I'm a bird of the night, you know. Ah, yes, a nightingale. You were magnificent this evening. When I heard you sing again, everything came back to me. Did it? You know, I have not forgot what you said to me that I have never been a good wife to Oh, Lisa, you. I'd give anything to wipe out what I said that day. I always say things to you that I don't mean. Ah, but the trouble is, there is always just enough truth. No, darling, no, 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 no truth at all. It was that young poet that, of yours that set me off. What, what's become of him, Lisa? <laughs> there is no one. There never has been oh, anyone. Uh, oh. <laughs> no, Gerald. <laughs> Excuse me. Hello? <clears throat> oh, Flora. Yes, he is still here. You want him? Flora? Mm -hmm. Oh. Hello, Flora. Yes, yes. You, you aren't home already? Oh, downstairs. Oh, I see, yes. <clears throat> yes, Flora, I'll, I'll call you when I'm leaving. Well, uh, no, no, not for 15 minutes, no. Well, well, these matters take careful discussion, you know, Flora. Yes. Yes, yes, yes Flora, dear. I, I said yes. Good night, Flora. Oh, oh, I suppose I've got to go, Lisa. Of course. Good night. Oh, Lisa, Lisa. I hardly know you in this mood. No tricks, no florid speeches, no poetry... Perhaps you're glad to get rid of me. Oh, haven't you anything to say? No. Goodbye, then, dear. I wish you'd cared for me. I wish it hadn't been just emotion without any heart behind it. How dare you say such things to me? Emotion without any heart. Do you think I learned to sing as I'd never sung before? Do you think I was singing to the little fat tenor? No, I'm glad that I was good for your career, at least. Oh, I thought you wanted the world to be richer in music for our love. If you had some better wish, why didn't you make me listen? Oh, Lisa, Lisa, I was a blundering fool. I only wished... Oh, shut that thing off. Excuse me. Hello? What? Oh, one moment. It's Flora. Again? Hello? <clears throat> hello, hello. Where are you? In a drugstore? What drugs? What? Yeah, oh, yes, I know you're not deaf. I'm sorry. Yes, I, I know. It's late, Flora. Yes, I, I said I know it's late. Yes, but I, I... But after all, she's still my own wife, you know, Flora. <laughs> Oh, good Lord. Hello, I'm sorry, Flora. I didn't mean to. No, yes, no. Uh, all right, I... Yes. Uh, well, I, I can't leave till you hang up, can I? <laughs> but, but, Flora, listen. Uh, oh, never mind. Poor Flora. Where were we? I was telling you, darling, that I was a blundering fool ever to let you go. Oh, Lisa, what are we to do? What can we do? Lisa, say that you love me. Tell me that you still love me. Gerald... Gerald, Tell dear. me that it isn't too late. I seem to hear the sands of time rushing out. It is almost too late. Do you hear them too, Gerald? Lisa, I... Oh, why can't you hear anything for that blasted it's phone? Laura, she's calling you, Gerald. Yes, I Laura's wish I'd... calling you. I wish I'd never had that phone put in this place. You could have it taken out. That's not a bad idea. And I'll attend to it right away. If she wants to speak to me now, she'll have to write. <laughs> Oh, Gerald. Oh, Lisa. My God. We pause for station identification. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. The second act of our play is finished, and our curtain goes up on Act Three of Enter Madame, starring Grace Moore and Basil Rathbone in a few moments. 
In the meantime, we extend the stage of the Lux Radio Theater to New Orleans, where we hear from our regular producer, Mr. Cecil B. DeMille. Edward Arnold, and greetings from New Orleans, ladies and gentlemen. Last Friday night in this gracious, charming city, it was my pleasure to stage the world premiere of my latest picture, The Buccaneer, the story of Jean Lafitte, pirate and patriot, starring Frederick March. And in keeping with my custom of bringing you personalities behind the screen, you will hear now from the famed historian and celebrated author of the book Lafitte the Pirate, from which The Buccaneer was adapted. He's the distinguished Louisianan, Lyle Saxon. More than a hundred years have passed since John Lafitte held the fate of America in the palm of his hand. Yet here in New Orleans, steeped in tradition and romance, it almost seems as if he were still alive. Is that fact, Mr. Saxon, or just my imagination? Well, Mr. DeMille, all we do know is that he was last seen sailing away to start a new pirate kingdom in Yucatan. We know he never did. What happened to him will remain an unsolved mystery. But the descendants of his men can be found here today, fishermen and oystermen. And each year, some excited individual comes stamping into town, flourishing a map with the conviction that he has at last located the buried treasure of Jean Lafitte. What do you think is Lafitte's greatest achievement? Uh, his service in the War of 1812, when he threw his little army of sea robbers to the American cause and enabled Andrew Jackson to win the Battle of New Orleans. And it is amazing when you realize first that England offered him $30,000 in gold and captaincy in the Royal Navy and land grants if he'd fight against Jackson. And second, that just before he volunteered to help America, America had raided Barataria, destroyed his little empire, and seized half a million dollars in loot. Now, that loot has always fascinated me. Among its colorful contents were over a hundred dozen pairs of silk stockings. And believe it or not, two cases of soap. Well, I like tall stories, Mr. DeMille, but don't tell me that the pirates are taking long Lux flakes to care for those silk stockings. <laughs> no, no, but Lux definitely played a part in the making of the Buccaneer. Aside from the care of costumes, we used Lux for a foam effect in some surf scenes. And where our leading lady, Francisca Gall, is shown scrubbing a floor. After all, we do have to be careful of Miss Gall's hands. Well, I'm sure the women of New Orleans use Lux Flakes in just the same big way the studios do in Hollywood. And speaking of the women of New Orleans, Mr. DeMille, I think that you've seen all types of American women will agree that our Louisiana Belle is among the loveliest of them all. Uh, there's no doubt about it, but I'm on my way to Atlanta, and there may be some Georgia peaches listening in. So getting back to the Buccaneer, the honors that were heaped on Lafitte after the battle were soon forgotten. People remembered again that he was an outlaw and a pirate. Driven from New Orleans to the Spanish town of Galveston, Texas, he ruled there for a while until the government drove him again into the sea. Yes, in ten short years, he reached the height of achievement and the depths of disgrace that come only to a hero and a public enemy. It's been a source of great satisfaction, Mr. DeMille, that my book was of some help in making the Buccaneer, a motion picture that restores to Lafitte his rightful place in American history. To you, Mr. Saxon, my sincere gratitude. And now, back to Hollywood. Thank you, Mr. DeMille and Mr. Saxon. We're back in Hollywood now, where Grace Moore and Basil Rathbun resume our play, Enter Madame. Early the next morning, and already Lisa has fled to the piano to translate her great happiness into music. Gerald leans across the keyboard, gazing lovingly into her eyes. Are you happy, darling? So happy, darling. Will you always be happy, darling? Always, my darling. Promise me that you'll never go away again. Promise me that. Forevermore, I shall be like the shadow that the sun casts now to the east, now to the west, but always close beside you. Oh, my dear. Of course, I won't mind your, your singing your performance at the Metropolitan now and then. And at Covent Garden, just... Once in a while. No. <laughs> yes, once in a great while, surely. Madame? Yes, Maria? Uh, Signor Farnham, he's only telephoned to tell about South America. Oh, I knew we shouldn't have had that thing fixed. Give me the phone. Listen, my dear old, I prove I am serious. Hello, Farnham. Now I want you to not get excited. Very calmly I speak. I will not go to South America, Farnham. What? He makes very bad noises. No, Farnham, my mind is made up. From now on, I leave for Tranquillite and my Gerald. What? Farnham, you should be ashamed. Yeah, let me speak to him. Hello. Hello, listen, Farnham. It's all off. Lisa's going to settle down and raise chickens. Yes, I said chickens on my farm with an orchestra of crickets. How do you like that? Goodbye. Oh, 
Gerald, so masterful. Lisa, Lisa, are you sure you can be happy just with me? Listen, my darling, listen. Oh. I'll take romance Why my heart is young and eager to fly I'll give my heart a try I'll take romance I'll take romance Why my arms are strong That was lovely. So, this is what's going on. Johnny! He's in again. Well, what's the meaning of this? I demand to know the meaning of this. I'm here I know, to... I know you're here to protect your sister. What are you doing here at this hour of the morning? And in your evening clothes. Oh, I, I wear them all the time now. It's more becoming. Meaning what? Meaning that you want to mind your own business. Get out of here. I won't. Not until I, you've explained your presence here. I won't stir a oh, foot. Oh, Johnny, it's all right. Gerald and I are together again. The divorce, it is canceled. Canceled? Yes. yes. Divorce, canceled. What do you mean? What do you... What do you mean, what do we mean? It's all off. It's finished. We're still married, and we're going on being married. Cancel. Good morning. Flora. Oh, Mrs. Preston, come in. Good morning. I thought I'd find you here, Gerald. I just wanted to make sure. Oh, yes? You didn't answer the telephone last night. I answered it three or four times. You know what I mean perfectly well? I tried to reach you for hours. Finally, the operator said the receiver was off. Well, it must have fallen off. You take me for a fool? If you think I'll let myself be humiliated like this for a common opera singer. Oh, he's coming. No, 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 Flora, listen. Oh, don't imagine you've broken my heart. I happen to be rather hard up, and I need a solvent husband. What do you suppose this woman wants of you except to pay her debt? Oh, I'll scratch your eyes Lisa, out. wait, wait, oh, Flora. My. Flora, you'll please confine your remarks to me. I'll confine them to my lawyer. You, you'll make a good settlement. I'll know the reason why. Good day to you both. Oh, my. What a woman. How dare she? How dare she come into my house and talk so? It is as if she were the wife. I should have said to her, are you the wife? Yes, but darling, you seem to forget that we're practically divorced, you and I. Yes, and whose fault is it? Hers. Yes, yes, but it's all over now. Oh, she tried to ruin my life. I think I'll kill her. Uh, Lisa, Lisa, don't. It's over. The divorce is cancelled. Cancelled? Oh, shut up. <laughs> United Press? Well, this is Joe Farnham speaking. I've got a story for you fellas. Listen. Number one, Gerald Fitzgerald will not marry Flora Preston. Two, Gerald Fitzgerald will remain wedded to Madame Della Robbia. Three, Madame Della Robbia is retiring from the opera and will devote the rest of her life to raising chickens. Now look, you'd better notify all the papers and get the reporters over to Fitzgerald's place. I'll meet him outside. Retiring. <laughs> Over my dead body. Hey, is this Della Robbia's apartment? Hey, open up. This is the press. Open the door. Come on, open up. Boys, boys, be quiet. Will you be quiet? Let me through here. Hey, what do you say about a story, Farnham? You'll get your story. Now, let me go in there and speak for it. Excuse me, boys. Lisa. Farnham, what does this mean? How dare they pound on my door? I will call the police. 
Go away, you monkey. Lisa, Lisa, for heaven's sake, that's the press out there. You can't talk to the press like that. What have we got to be afraid of? What? I'll tell you what. If they get in here and find Mr. Fitzgerald, they'll pin his handsome pan on every scandal sheet in these United States. But Gerald and I are married. You think that makes any difference to them? Think of the publicity, the stories. We've got to get out of here. We'll go down the fire escape. We'll go to my farm. Do you think they'll let you get away with that? They'll hound you all over the country. There's only one thing to do. What? Go to South America. What? Gerald, we could do it. Sure you could. I got the tickets right here. And while you're there, Lisa, you might as well accept that offer in Buenos Aires. Now, wait a minute. It's starting all over again. The whole thing's starting all over oh, again. Oh, Gerald, you said you loved oh, me. Oh, but Lisa... Maria, Archimedes, Dr. Giovanni, quick! Well, you'll have to travel light. Just grab your coat. I'll send the rest of your stuff tomorrow. Madame! Maria, my coat! What is the matter, Maria? Quick, Archimedes, bring Toto! Si, madame, what is it? We are going to South America! South America! Viva South America! Come on, quick! Not the fire escape! Listen, wait! Madame, are you... Oh, oh, thank oh, you, Maria! Listen, listen! Toto, Toto, here's Toto! I ought to have something to say about this! Oh, but Gerald, you carry Toto! No, Lisa, oh, I won't! Oh, but Gerald! Now, look here, darling. I'm doing all the things I swore I'd never do again. I'm letting you sing again, and I'm following you out of the country. But there's one thing I won't do. Carry that darn pup. I won't do it. I tell you, I won't. But we can't leave Toto. All right, then. You can leave me. Oh, Gerald, not again. Here they come. Gerald, please, please. Oh, give me the doggone dog. Come here, much. Oh, <laughs> oh my darling. This way, this way, out the window. Oh, wait. What is it now? Have a cigarette, brother. South American. <laughs> And that, ladies and gentlemen, winds up the dramatic portion of our program. Our stars will be back in just a moment. But now Melville Ruick has an interesting bit of news. Thank you, Mr. Arnold. Mrs. Ruth Nichols, well-known children's photographer, has recently taken pictures of many sets of twins and triplets. She writes, Strange as it may seem, I almost always find one twin good-tempered and easy to photograph. The other twin, hard to photograph. With triplets, usually one of the three is more temperamental than the others. Well, another interesting fact about triplets is that their mothers are so often enthusiastic users of Lux Flakes. As the mother of New Jersey triplets puts it, When the triplets came, requiring extra care and precautions, I knew that only Lux Flakes would do for their diapers and clothes. It keeps their woolen soft and unshrunken, and dresses and rompers unfaded. Diaper irritations and rashes are unknown to them. They simply haven't had any. For this good fortune, I give Lux full credit. Mothers everywhere use Lux Flakes for baby things because it is pure and gentle. It contains none of the harmful alkali, which, if left in baby's garments, irritates and chafes the skin. For all baby things insist on Lux Flakes. If they are safe in water, they are safe in Lux. Once again, Mr. Edward Arnold. I know you want to hear from Grace Moore and Basil Rathbone out of character and as themselves. And the easiest way to do that is to find a common ground for discussion. Have you any suggestions, Basil? Well, yes, there's always music. You're pretty active in musical circles out here, and I, uh, well, I could, if you insisted. <laughs> you mean sing? Well, well, yes, look out. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> By the way, did you ever hear me sing Asleep in the Deep? No, I didn't, and I haven't the slightest desire to. <laughs> no? no. <laughs> Loudly the bells oh, fine, in the fine, old house. Uh-huh. <laughs> no? <laughs> How's that, Miss Moore? Does that remind you of the Metropolitan? <laughs> well, I, I don't know, Mr. Arnold, but why don't you write for an audition? <laughs> I'll speak to Mr. Johnson about you when I get back. And how thrilled I am to be going back after being away for two years. It's like going back home to one's first love. But now I'd like to introduce a real singer. A little girl, 11 years old. Her name is Jean Ellis. And here she is. Thank you very much, Miss Moore. But if Mr. Arnold and Mr. Rathbone really want to sing... Oh, no, no, no. No, 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 no. no. We'd much rather hear you sing. Yeah, but but first I think Miss Moore should tell us something about Jean. After all, they're both from the same part of the country. Well, practically. Jean's home is in Williamsburg, Kentucky, and that's only 12 miles away from my old home of Jellicoe, Tennessee. So that makes us two Bill Hidbillies, doesn't it, Jean? (laughs) My brother wrote me about Jean a few weeks ago when I was in Chicago. I asked her to come and see me and let me hear her. All the way from Kentucky? No. Paul Whiteman had already heard Jean, and she made several appearances in Chicago with his orchestra. So I can't say that I discovered her. But I certainly think she has a voice like an angel, and I'm really very happy to have been of a little help to her. What would you like to sing for us tonight, Jean? 
I think I'd like to sing whatever you'd like me to sing. Well, in that case, my darling, I'll suggest Estrellita, which means little star in Spanish. And that's exactly what I think you are in English. Oh, thank you. This is the Columbia Broadcasting System. <laughs> 